If I put this 120 peso in that bank, will it double tomorrow? You know, you know, you know, when I was growing guys, or probably even you, if you grew up in the Philippines, your parents taught you to save money. Yes or yes, right? And then the first but the first venue where to put your money to grow it is where? In a bank, right? That's the notion before. When you want to grow your money, you put it in a bank. But today, nobody even tells you that you put your money to grow money in the bank, right? You just said it's for what? Safekeeping. The reason why I'm saying that is when you guys deposit your money to the bank, you're not expecting expecting it to grow. That's not really the purpose today, right? You know, we we use money for for encashing our checks, right? Pay our bills. That's just the reason. As long as it's safe and it's liquid convenient, meaning you can take money out, you can put money in anytime, we are okay. Is that true? Yes or yes? That's just the way it is, right? That's the reason why you use banks. No more growing money in the bank, right? Okay. Now the question is, when you put your money into the bank, what does the bank do with your money? With our money, they leverage it. OPM stands for what? Other people's money, exactly. So what people does, they put money to the bank, and what the bank does, they put it in a pool of money, right? They put it in a pool of money, and then they monetize your money for their own benefit, okay? So they monetize that money, they put it into an investment, stocks, bonds, real estate, what have you, right? And you know what's craziest about this situation? The second part, you become borrowers your own money. You guys, you guys know that? You know, I remember I had a client, I told her that, hey, you know, you're also a borrower of your own money. No, I don't borrow my own money. Yes, you do. How much is your money in your checking account? $5,000. How much do you owe in credit card? $5,000, there you go. And that's true, that's true. And this is the craziest thing, you're okay with that. Your money in the checking account is earning probably what, 0.03%? You guys agree? Okay? And your credit card, they charge you 24%. I don't even really get it. You know, I've seen a lot of financial needs analysis, you know, because I've been doing this business for a long time. You know, I review it, I talk to them about their, 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 their money. <laughs> uh, you know, one of my clients has $20,000 in her savings account, okay? It's just earning, again, 0.03%. And credit card debt of 20 grand, which actually some of the credit cards were even charging her 30%. I don't get it. I don't. Why would you? Right? But it's just the way it is, guys, right? So, so this is how the bank does. By the way, before you can even borrow money to the bank, you have to prove to them that you don't need the money so they will lend you the money. Is that true? Yes or yes? That's just the way it is. Right? And there's a crazy thing here, they do credit check. Man, right? They do credit check, charge you high interest rate. If you don't pay on time, they hurt your credit. They rep reprocess your, your purchases, foreclose your homes. That's just the way it is. Right? Okay, so this is the bank. Okay, so this is the full picture of the banking flow chart, guys. You as a depositor, by the way guys, did you know when you deposit money to the bank, you become a lender to the bank? You guys know that? You lend your money to the bank, that's the way it is. But of course, the banking system will not position you that way. You know, they always look, they would like to tell us that, hey, we're doing you a favor because we're taking care of your money. Okay, it is what it is. So we put money to the bank, and what the bank does, they put your money, they put it in a pool of money, they invest it, they monetize it for themselves. Oh, by the way, um, can, we, can I call you again? <laughs> Miguel, do you have Facebook? Oh, very good. Can I borrow your Facebook, just monetize it for a month? <laughs> no, right? Can't, you know, the point here, Miguel, is we don't want our Facebook to be monetized by other people, but you let your hard-earned money be monetized by the banks. And you're okay with it. I'm okay with it too, right? Whew. And they let us borrow our own money. I can really get it. But that's just the way it is. They charge us high interest rate when we borrow money from them, and they just reward us a very minuscule amount of interest rate. This is the full picture of the banking flowchart, guys. Probably this is your first time to see this. You know, it's just, it's, it's, I'm not saying you are in a very bad position, but I just want you to understand, this is where we are all at today. 
Now look at this. As a consumer right now sitting down there, look at the picture here. My question is, does the picture tell you it's a fair situation as a consumer? The answer is what? No. no. But we're all in it, right? But look at this, guys. If you are the bank, wouldn't you want to reap all the benefits of becoming a bank now? What's the answer? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's it, right? Oh, those people who didn't say yes would be broke the whole the rest of the year. Just kidding. <laughs> See? That's the reason why I want to show you this. So you don't understand. When you become your own bank, definitely you would want to reap all the benefits of becoming a bank. Okay, Enrico, okay, Enrico, I got it, I got it. I want to become my own bank. So the question is what? How am I going to be my own bank? Okay, there's what you call the infinite banking concept. The infinite banking concept is going to be your tool, okay, your vehicle to become your own bank. You need infinite banking concept. I'm from Las Vegas. Whenever I drive going to LA, of course, I need to have a vehicle. That vehicle is called a car, right? I have to use that car going to Las, to Los Angeles. But here now, when you need a vehicle to become your own bank, you need infinite banking concept. And then they say, ah, oh, so that's the way to become your own bank. The question here now is, Enrico, how much is infinite banking concept? Regrettably, you don't buy infinite banking concept. What you guys need to do to become your own bank, you have to formulate your bank, your infinite banking concept. How do you formulate it? Those three things below this one, this, uh, this slide, is the formula on how to become how how you can actually have that infinite banking concept to work. The formula is the product should come from a mutual company, and it should be a dividend paying whole life policy. That's it. If you have those three things, you are now able to create that infinite banking concept. And because that's too complicated, I know that's the reason why these two companies right in front of you right now they created already a product of of a, a product that will operate like the infinite banking concept so you will be able to become your own bank. Am I making sense? So you don't even have to formulate it already. These two companies already created that product and all you need to do is to get into that product so you'll operate like a bank. By the way guys, just to make things clear, I'm not saying that you will be putting up a brick and mortar bank here, okay? The concept is for you to have a system that will operate your finances like you're in a bank. Okay, so now, so we already know that we have companies already created a product, so you'll be able to operate like a bank. So you already have that, okay? By the way, Enrico, why do I need to have life insurance as part of this banking system? In fact, there's a legal reason behind it, and are you guys familiar with this IRC 7702? Have you guys heard of this one before? Anyone? That's okay. You know, RC, IRC says, uh, it means that internal revenue code and the number is 7702. You know, 401k is a, it's a tax code, right? It's not a product. IRC 401k, 403b, uh, 529, 457. These are all tax code. IRC again stands for internal revenue code 7702. And the concept of this tax code has been used by the wealthy people for a long time, right? But now the, uh, they put it into law. The Congress put it into law and instituted by the IRS in 1984. This is actually the law that governs all of your life insurance product. You know, those people raise your hand. If you have that life insurance, that's the law that supports that product, 7702. And that's the same law. will protect everything that will grow inside of your life insurance product. From liens, garnishes, judgment, divorce, annulment, and bankruptcy. Oh, men just put their hand like that when they heard annulment. And divorce too. <laughs> so, okay, this is a law that will protect you from liens, garnishes, judgment, divorce, annulment, and bankruptcy. I call this law 7702 MC Hammer Law. You guys know MC Hammer? What's this song? Can't touch it. Right? <laughs> That's why this is an MC Hammer Law. Nobody can touch it. I love it. You know? All right, guys. So this is the law. So what does the law help you to do? So today your money probably you put it into an IRA, 401k, 403b, TSP, TDA, TRS, SAP, simple annuity, what have you. You put your money in there. Nobody's saying that you're wrong, but we, most of us, we put our money into this type of a platform. But you and I know that these are all what? Number one, taxable. Yes or yes? Yes, yes of course. Number two, 
attached to the market volatility. What does it mean? Your money can grow up, down, up, down, up, down, up. What's next? Oh my God. I think I'm only talking to one person here, guys. <laughs> That's Hawaii. <laughs> Just kidding, guys, right? So again, up, down, up, down, up. What's next? Oh. See? And we're all there, you know? And then, of course, if you don't follow it, there's government penalties attached to it, and there's what you call Wall Street fees. That's just the way it is. That's where we are today. So what does the law allow us to do? It allows us to do, to put money or grow money inside a life insurance contract. You grow that money over time. When you take it out, that's tax-free, penalty-free, and risk-free. That's it. That's just the way how it grows. If you know how to use it correctly, of course, right? So, you know, when people try to grow their money, what's the first thing you ask? How much is my interest rate, right? How much does my money grow, right? But the second most important question that you probably have forgotten to ask is what? How much am I going to save? What? I'm growing my money, and there's such a thing as a saving inside that growing the money? Yes! Look at this, guys. Just an example of that is the tax-free environment. If your money will grow in a platform that will grow your tax-free, isn't it like a growth too? You're saving money from that. See? Now, look at this, guys. We want tax-free, penalty-free, and risk-free. Yes or yes? Yeah. Yes, but why are we all here? We want it. But we are here. Come think about it. That's the reason why, guys, you were invited here today by the person, of course, you know, your friends, probably your family. They would want you to know this. They would want you to be better, right? You would, they would want you to see other options. And this is an option for you. There's a lot of products attached to the 7702. But in particular, to become your own bank, I'm actually talking about a whole life insurance, a very specific life insurance that will allow you to operate like a bank. Or we got already know whole life insurance. Probably you do, but definitely this is not the whole life insurance that we all know or your grandfather has. It's a very specific whole life insurance that will allow you to operate like a bank. By the way, this is the most important page of the whole discussion today. And um, I hope you know you can take a picture if you want to. Um, that's okay, no, I'm telling you, you can take a picture of me if you want 